culture. The resume must be like Good hold on. Good hold on. Good job. Hey, great job. Burdensome and expensive. I think the change that I've identified. But I started working in college as I saw the real advantages to technical training. And, and as I've gone along more, and I, I start thinking to myself, now that where I am, where I am, that apprenticeships are really a form of post-secondary higher education. And there are some challenges, because I, I look at East Asians, like my family, you know, we're, we're East Asians, we're immigrants like everyone else, and South Asians, you know, I never, dis, I never disobeyed my father in my life. If my father said, you're going to do this, you're going to go to school here, I kind of, I had no choice. I had to really do what my father told me. Things are not much different even still in, in, in these cultures. And so when we start talking about getting young people involved, young new Canadians involved, with the trades and apprenticeships. We need to speak to the families as a whole somehow to, to accomplish this. And so let's get to the topic I want to talk about. So just on Monday, we had our first outreach. It was a, a round table we had with the motive power industry. And what we're trying to accomplish out of that is to figure out how we could work together, how the College of Trades could work together with them to advance trades and apprenticeships and how we could leverage resources out there and really work with partners because you know what everyone knows there's less and less if you're in our organization dependent on some degree of government funding there's not more money for you so you got to look at your resources and figure out how you can best employ those and how can the college work to facilitate this and somehow be a place that that can I don't bring, bring people together, organize this together to, to talk to employers and, and apprentices and, and figure out how we can facilitate this kind of relationship so it will be successful because everyone talks about the skills shortage and meeting the needs with the employers. But a friend of mine, he has buses. And he called me up the day and says, how do I get an apprentice? I mean, it, it's a simple question. The answer is complicated. Yeah, how do you connect it? And we got to simplify this for everybody in this whole system, for someone who wants to become an apprentice, to make it easy for them to become an apprentice because we need them. And you know, I, and, and personally, one of the areas that, that I really want to focus on is how we work with our, our new Canadians. And it, there are language problems, and you're quite right. In some of these areas, uh, some of the trades, if you don't have that language skill, it, it, it's dangerous. If you don't understand, uh, you know, with the, say, say electricity, for example, you know, but there are some things that I think that the uh, organizations are doing. Unfortunately, I am I work with colleges too, and they do have a presence in many other countries as well. But somehow people don't connect that uh, opportunity in those countries. So if you're a professional in another country and you want to, you know, connect and become the professional here. There are some programs with colleges to do that, to elevate that level so you get the higher level of technical English too. They're not enough, I understand that as well, but the minister made a good, a good point though. If you talk to my grandfather and you ask him why he came to Canada, he came here for the opportunity. He, he, he knew there wasn't a job for him. He wanted to come here because he knew it was a better place. And so, you know, here's your balance. And the minister answered that question very well, I thought. Um, but my grandpa, well, of course, my, both my grandfathers, my grandmothers cleaned, clothes, uh, cleaned houses for rich people in Vancouver. Well, my grandfathers did gardening for them, and the other one worked in the, in the bush as a, as a lumberjack. So we don't really come from a family that uh, are professionals, uh, but we work towards that, too. And so we together need to work together, employers, and, and, you know, people looking for jobs, uh, organizations such as, as Skills for Change, because we need to work together to try to get a focus. And I think we can help at the college. So one of the things that we were just talking about earlier on with, with somebody from Skills for Change is that we're going to be doing these, these round tables with different parts of, you know, the motor power, the in industrial area, and maybe we need to get involved more organizations like yours to be at the table too, because I think you're part of the solution. And, and that's how we can work as a college to try to bring people together to work together to, to leverage those opportunities, but also have that information out there. And I guess every organization has, you know, newsletters 
Um, I saw a nice picture in yours, by the way, Colin, in the clack. But, but, but we all have newsletters, and how do we use that to get the message out there to the opportunities for the programs? I mean, there are a lot of programs that people do need to get involved with in terms of how to increase your skills to actually get to those areas. So I think that's how we can work together, and then we're certainly going to continue this discussion. But uh, I think that's what our role could be. Uh, and uh, so I, I kind of vacillate all over the, what, I, what I want to say, but I, I'll, I'll end with a little story here because you gave me five minutes, and usually it takes me five minutes to pronounce my name. Um, so in a town, you can call it, uh, I don't know, pick an industry, uh, say uh, carpenters. So there's three carpenters who have businesses next to each other, next to each other, next to each other. They're com competing. And one day, this guy on this far end has a great idea. He figures, I'll put a big sign and advertise, and I'll say, biggest bargains in town. Now, the other two guys have a problem. What do we do to compete? So the guy on this end has put the big sign that says, lowest prices in town. Now, the guy in the middle has a problem. Biggest bargains, lowest prices. The next day, he puts a sign in front of his, his uh, shop that says, main entrance here. <laughs> now, <laughs> The point of that, I think, is the college can act as the main entrance to bring together our partners. And that's what we need right now. And that's the one thing I realize is we need more and more partners out there. And the better partners we become, the more we can advance our goal, which is the same. Our goal is to advance apprenticeships and the trades as an opportunity for new Canadians, First Nations, and women. And that's one of the areas that we want to really push forward is, is I mean, it's a great opportunity for women to get involved with, too. And I think these are our priorities right now at the college. Often the apprenticeships, I find, is um, certainly geared to youth and a lot of emphasis and from a longer-term career path. But I think in terms of transitional and opportunities and loyalties and the ability to utilize skills and transition into the workforce, for many of the immigrant and newcomers that um, trades was not seen as a career path and not valued in their home country, and from a status and other perspectives, it wasn't something but looking at all the other barriers and opportunities and sometimes the limitations to enter those traditional, this would be a vehicle. And it's never been at the forefront in terms of um, types of programs, pre-apprenticeships. There's always a, an age limitation, if you will. And I wonder from a sectoral point of view in those trades, is that something that you're going to try and advance so that it's not just youth-specific, youth-oriented, but that there is still a sizable, because people are working longer, so that bar is going from a labor market readiness perspective. Yeah, there's no it's mandatory retirement age in Ontario right. now. So I think in terms mm -hmm. of longer term transition and capacity and, and the kind of skills that employers and, uh, and the workforce is demanding, it, is that something you're looking at as well? I mean, yeah, I mean, look, at, we, we're, our mandate is to advance the trades, in, uh, period. And that includes everybody. It has to be inclusive in terms of how we, how we strategize doing this. You know, and, and uh, it's interesting, the minister said, you know, new Canadians, sometimes we need to just say Canadians. We're just one big category out there. We need to be working with everybody. But, you know, not everywhere in the world are, are trades devalued. If you look at Europe, uh, you, we get a lot of the, the, the real craftsmen and trades uh, that are actually coming here to fill some of the jobs that we could be doing. And, you know, some of the challenges we have, and, I, and I'll say this right off the bat, is the college has not been really good in communications for the last year. And that's one of the things we need to do. And one of the other things we need to do as well is we have a lot of potential partners out there. We need to have a presence. So you have these type of events. We need to be there, not just here, not just in the GTA, but right across the province. So yeah, we, we do need to do that. And I think it's an opportunity because you can see even in many trades, you know, a lot of the, the old tradesmen are getting older. I mean. The baby boomers are, are getting older, and you need to replace that continuously. You need that experience. You need to have, you know, the whole spectrum working for you. And I think that's a great opportunity. You know, their, their experience does matter in many areas too. And I think sometimes it doesn't matter if you have experience doing other jobs, but if you have experience working. You can bring that kind of experience and maturity to to a, a new field if you can. So you're absolutely right. It, it shouldn't be exclusive. It should be inclusive in terms of how we work together. And that's why, like your organization is doing that. See, that's why we need to talk to you. You know, because we need to incorporate the good things that people are doing already, right? One thing I think a lot of people don't realize is the number of apprenticeship opportunities, the number of trades that are out there. Everybody thinks immediately of plumbing, electricians, and 
that's pretty much it. You know, about 160, I don't know what the number now is. I mean, it's a huge number. Was it 150? 150, yeah. 156. 156. Yeah. And, and people, a lot of them don't realize that. So I think us who are service providers can do a lot for you by putting that out there because people realize then, not only is the opportunity, there's a lot of backing from the government in terms of finance opportunities as well. You know, it's, it's the, the way the trades and training, like, if, you know, if you're older like me, and when you went to high school and even grade school, I said grade seven and eight, you went to, uh, you know, industrial arts, right? And, and somehow that didn't seem to be as important. But if you went to see some of these, 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 these training centers, you know, CLAC or, or colleges or any of these groups, it is sophisticated as heck. And, and if you look at in the motive power area, I mean, in the old days, you know, you could lift up the hood and think you maybe have a chance of doing something by rattling a wire. Now you have to be a technician. You have to be smart to be in the trades. And I think we need to make sure people understand this. That this is like I wasn't kidding when I said this is this is a form of higher education, and it is. And the training, if you saw the training they went through, it, it is complicated, and you've got to be uh, good at what you're doing. And so, you know, that whole image of the trade somehow being devalued, we need to sort of turn that around and put the validation behind it that it, it's a worthy profession to be in. And it is. My question is concerning the licensing for skilled straight people. And um, for example, I myself, I'm an electrician certified in um, the Caribbean the country I came from. And um, I wanted to know, like, what does the College of Trades, what is the College of Trades doing to assist people like us when we come to Canada. Because even though you're certified in your country, you need to be certified here. And in the meantime, while you're waiting to be certified, you know, if there's a temporary license that can be issued, <coughs> when we come here, we need to work, we need to live too, in the meantime, right? And yeah. I understand that College of Trades has taken over the licensing role. As of April, you're right. Of trades. Yeah. So, you know, I'm wondering what is there to facilitate for us in the meantime, while we are waiting for the Canadian license. And that's one of the things we're looking at right now. We're having a lot of discussions with our stakeholders in terms of what's the best way to do these things. Can we improve that process somehow? Uh, and so this is what we're deliberating right now. It, it's complicated as all heck. Plus, we have, we're directly working with the Fairness uh, Commissioner as well to make sure that we, uh, we do take that into account uh, in terms of uh, foreign uh, trained uh, folks as well and their credentials. So, you know, we're trying to be as fair as we can. I mean, some of the things we're looking at is if other jurisdictions have uh, an equivalency that uh, is a high standard, that, that maybe we can start recognizing some of that as well and, and making that a little bit uh, less uh, red tape. I always had paid red tape when I was in the government. Uh, you know, we were trying to get rid of red tape. But you still need to have standards. And, and that's the important thing to understand. And, and part of our, our mandate really, we're, we're, we are two real mandates. One is, uh, our first mandate is promote the trades and apprenticeships. The second mandate is, I'm the regulator. So it's our job to make sure that people, so the, the, the public, the public wants to get an electrician. You have to know that electrician is qualified to do that job. I mean, just look at the recent uh, ice storm we had. I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of folks out there who are saying they're electricians, they weren't electricians. And, you know, I don't know if you want to take that shortcut and save 50 bucks, but you know what, if your house burns down, you'll think twice about it. You know, same thing with mechanics. You know, you want someone fiddling around with your brakes who is not qualified, you know, you're going to kill yourself or somebody else. So there's the balance there that we have as a regulator to make sure that we are providing that standard to the consumer. The great thing about the registry is you'll have this, the public can get access to the registry. You can see who's got their CFQ, who's qualified to do that work, and it gives some assurance to the public because otherwise, you know, some guy shows up and, you know, when's the last time someone asked, do you have your CFQ to do that work? If you're a member of the public, probably never. So, you know, we've got to make sure we protect the public too. And the trades. <laughs>